bed last night, I pulled out the YouTube app and wrote a tweet, that feeling going to bed knowing the algo found your video and you're going to wake up famous. It looks like the YouTube algorithm picked up my second video. And the current stats are 1.2 thousand. It's not quite Mr. Beast, but it's, it's pretty great for a almost first time video. So pretty excited about that. Thanks to everyone for watching. Really nice to see people getting the value out of this uh, since it is kind of raw, it's not edited. And so helpful to see that. And I have been starting to get messages from folks uh, who are saying that they are really enjoying it. So that's really validating. And if you like it, please subscribe, like it, and, and send me messages and comments that helps keep me going. So getting back, and this should be a shorter video. But another really exciting thing is it's on my way home. I'm dropping my daughter off and I had this idea for a flywheel for this app. And there was this just kind of moment of clarity that there was maybe this uh, kind of loop that could work better than I was maybe anticipating. It was by flipping something on its head. First, I'm going to just put this idea into Claude and actually see what happens. Um, let's see what it thinks. And I'm not, I'm not going to share about it in a second but I'm gonna let Claude kind of understand this first. And then what I'm gonna ask Claude to do is actually visualize this idea. Because I think flywheels are best explained with, with a visual. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if Claude can help me generate that. Can you help me visualize this flywheel? And then I can kind of talk about what it was. So I think this is pretty incredible that Claude can kind of like write code and it kind of turns it into this diagram. Um, so let's see if it got it kind of okay. Okay, so, so users interact with AI mentors. That's the basics of the platform, right? And then they, cons and they consume credits. Um, so there has to be some level of scarcity for the usage because I'm paying op you know, OpenAI or whatever I use to, for this AI. So I have to have some way for people to just have limits. So they consume credits, and when they need more credits, there's kind of two paths. One is that they, let's see, is this representing this right? So, yeah, so one example that they, they can share the content. So it looks like that's represented here, where they, they do something giving the, the platform growth. That's part of the loop. Now it's not just one person. If I get one person, then then maybe they're going to share it and get more people and kind of, you know, one is not just one, it becomes much more. So that's part of the, the flywheel, getting users to share about their conversation with AI. But at some point during the conversation, you're going to be like, hey, you're kind of running low on credits. But if you share your conversation, we can give you more credit. One idea, I'm not sure if it's a good, with a user generated content, it can be helpful to publish it. It's at the end of a conversation or something like that. But like, if you could have some way to like share it, maybe you have like votes on, on fun conversations or good ideas that came out. And user generated content is great for SEO. So if it can get backlinks, if you can dynamic content that's generated daily. That's one part of the flywheel. But the more interesting part that was kind of an aha for me that's kind of unique to this idea. In a way, you have AI mentors, you need them to be based on real mentors or real experts. And so the, I, I was seeing that initially, initially as like a risk to the thing, but it could become a strength. Who are these people? Well, these are often people who have content businesses. Um, they have a lot to share and they generally benefit from people knowing about them and being able to go, you know, whether it's subscribe to their newsletter, or go find more of their content, they generally have some way to monetize that. And so you can kind of flip it on its head and rather than just being like begging for people to say yes, it could be offering them something, which is a lead. Or imagine you're in a conversation or getting value. Maybe you're out of credits or whatever it is. And it's like, or, or just in some point in the journey. And it's like, hey, th these people, this, this real person has a newsletter. Do you want more advice like this? And you sign up and then that that could be something that the the mentor or the expert actually values enough to pay for. And, and that could be part of the business model. So on one side, you can have um, users who are free kind of sharing, getting more users. They run out of credit, they can directly pay for a subscription to have unlimited credits or whatever it is, whatever we offer. But they can also subscribe and to, to these experts or real life mentors 
and th there's kind of a win win situation and that can continue the flywheel so and, and 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 so then there's there's kind of another loop that isn't just users and the platform but it's 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 the mentors and experts that we can get on the platform and incentivize them to share it um, and and as an example of something you can do and again i don't think this is represented well on here but I, i'll actually show you another version that i generated a, a while back let's see let's see if i'm able to get to this there's another version i think this is a bit better you get the basic idea of mentors or experts coming onto the platform they want to come onto the platform because they get more subscribers with kind of their AI mentor working on their behalf, bringing people into their fold, and and they can pre and and they might even be willing to to pay for subscribers they get from the platform, and then they will send people to the platform because we can have some incentive to where if you if you create signups from your link or whatever, then you get that some some credit of of free of free leads to your newsletter. So there's incentive to get as many people to sign up for, for this as possible. Okay, all this is to create kind of these incentives and, and, and uh, a flywheel to, for growth. And so what's really interesting is you can use Claude not only for visualization, but to build models. And so I'll just, I'll just kind of share a quick example of that. Can you build me a growth model based on this? flywheel concept. I'm going to let's see what it comes up with. Interesting. What is this doing? So it's writing, it's doing some visualization or code. Oh, oh, I guess this is just a raw, a raw thing. Okay, so it's just kind of calculating. Please make the assumptions interactive. Let's see if it lets me do that. And now it's writing actual code. And at the other end, we'll see if we have an interactive model. Models are, are about just back of the napkin. What do you have to believe for this to get to the outcome I might want? Do you have to believe in some kind of crazy growth rate? Let's build in some assumptions that we can float, you know, try out. We can see if I change this thing, how, you know, how much does it change the model? And let's you kind of see what's sensitive to, so you can see like what, what are the things that are really going to matter to make this work? Let's see, is it still okay? This seems like a bug. Seems like I can't use this yet. Oh, let me see. Can I preview the model? Let's see. There we go. Interesting. Okay. Can you show growth as a graph and Give me input sliders for the assumptions. Let's see if that works. So we're generating, so now it's writing code. All right, here we go. This is more what I had in mind. And this is pretty cool. So you can put in initial number of users and let's assume we get 800 users and it has some subscription rate, revenue per paid subscription, initial number of mentors, etc. From here we can refine and you can see on one side you have revenue over here. You have maybe the number of users. This is pretty cool. I, I will skip a, a few steps because I wasn't recording. Let's see if this opens. It, it became quite complex. So I ended up with this model where you can select a scenario. So like, what's the high case? What's the low case? It just set some defaults for the, the things. What's the medium case? 
I used it to figure out reasonable defaults, like what's industry good. I'll just give a, a picture of how to set expectations for some of these assumptions. And then you end up with this idea of okay, what do I have to believe in the medium case, right? Where I end up on month 12 with 13,000 a month in revenue. It's this amount of, of social sharing, mentors and the growth of mentors. Like you can see if I change these things, how much does that affect the model? I, I think that's a really useful thing. Of course, these are, these are all just, you know, I'm just, just make, kind of making things up, but you kind of get to see if it was like this, what would the outcome be? Because it's really important to get this number of mentors and this amount of growth in mentors, et cetera, if I really believe that this flywheel can work. And I'll also write things like the chat's getting too long. I can't do any more on this one, but maybe that's a good wrap for the video. You kind of see how I took a idea for a flywheel turned it into a um, visualization and then into a model. That could be a good way to evaluate the business side of the idea. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.